My name is Martin McNish. Dude, you're joining me here for Quantitative so Methods 1 and 2. Uh, and you're also going to see me again on the session. With regard to stock options and stock warrants, we first apply a dilution test, which once again is to compare the exercise price of the stock option or warrant with the average market price. And if the exercise price is less than the average market price, the stock option or warrant is deemed to be dilutive. We then determine the denominator effect of the hypothetical exercise of the stock option or warrant by applying a scenario that's sometimes called the treasury stock method. Now we'll note here that there is no numerator effect from stock options and stock warrants, but there will potentially be a denominator effect again if the security is dilutive. Now the treasury stock method assumes that the company receives cash upon the exercise of the stock options or warrants as they issue the stock that the holders of the options and warrants exercise. They use the cash received to buy treasury stock on the open market effectively at the average share price for the period. And so there's a net change in shares from the company's standpoint. They issue additional shares from the exercise of the options or, and warrants, but then they repurchase treasury shares by taking the proceeds from the exercise of the options and buying stock. And so what we'll do is to calculate the number of common shares from the option exercise, we'll calculate the cash received by the firm from the option exercise, then we'll calculate the number of shares that can be purchased at the average market price with the exercise proceeds. Again, the company has cash coming in from the exercise of the option. They've issued shares. They will then take that cash and buy treasury shares, hypothetically, on the open market at the average share price for the period. And so that netting of the shares issued upon the exercise of the option uh, with the shares reacquired as treasury shares gives us the net increase in common shares outstanding. So rather than essentially work through that scenario, there is a shortcut to this. The net increase in common shares will be the number of shares from exercise of the options multiplied by a factor which is 1 minus the exercise price of the option divided by the average price of the company stock for the period. And so diluted earnings per share will basically be the net income available for common shareholders, the same amount reported as or used in basic earnings per share if there are no other dilutive securities. So we start with our uh, income or numerator from the basic earnings per share computation, and then we adjust the denominator for this net increase in common shares due to the option exercise. So we've got an example. Uh, the net income available to common shareholders is assumed to be $6 million. The weighted average common shares outstanding, $2.5 million. The average price of the company's stock in the market for the period is $100. The exercise price of the options that are outstanding is $85. So on average, they are in the money. The number of options is 500,000. So in terms of a dilution check, we merely need to compare the average market price with the exercise price of the options. And since the exercise price of the options is less than the average share price, or the average share price is greater than the exercise price, the options are deemed to be dilutive. So we can take the number of shares that would have been issued upon hypothetical exercise of the options, 500,000, and adjust by a factor one minus the exercise price of the option over the average market price of the stock. And that works out to 75,000 additional shares that would have been issued. So our diluted earnings per share is to take our $6 million that would have been part of our basic earnings per share computation divide by the two and a half million dollars, or rather two and a half million shares outstanding used in our basic earnings per share computation, increase by the additional 75,000 shares under the hypothetical exercise of the stock options. And we will get their diluted earnings per share of $2.33.